Hello, Lewis. How, why are you here today? I'm here today because I have friends that live in this uh, this tent camp here. This is a houseless protest, and uh, Bart has issued this uh, the residents of this place a statement saying they have to leave by 6 p.m. tonight. And you know this land is unused. There's no reason that people can't be housing themselves. They're not asking for anything from the city or from Bart other than just this land that's completely unused and everyone deserves housing. A lot of the residents here are disabled and they can't afford housing in other locations. So it's absolutely ridiculous that BART is uh, trying to evict these people. I think that the city is full of windbag politicians who like to talk a lot but don't actually like to do a lot. And quite honestly, I've got a few ideas on how to solve the homelessness. Instead of spending all that money on police and city workers, why not buy a piece of property, put some concrete slabs down that have all the hookups for a mini home, and then let the homeless people build their own mini homes. Uh, I'm here today because um, uh, the group that I organize with for Animal Rights, Direct Action Everywhere, uh, formed an offshoot group called Squad. And Squad is based on the idea that we could uh, mobilize our people sometimes to support other events. So what happens is like something's happening, uh, we create a squad event page, and then this way our community members get to be aware of other stuff that's happening and gives them an opportunity to go and support other causes and hopefully you know be the most well-rounded well activists and people we can be and help out other groups and, and also learn something in the process. So specifically today, um, uh, my friend Robin uh, lives at this camp and he's an animal rights activist uh, who works with me in direct action everywhere and uh, he let us know um, last week that um, they came and investigated the site and they were asking for people who were disabled to show some sort of form of documentation of that and which is I guess historically a precursor to um, kicking people out. Uh, they want to say like, oh, we reached out to the disabled members of the community and um, tried to offer services, and then typically that follows with uh, an eviction. And uh, it was a few months ago, there was a, a camp in Oakland that was um, just had a great reputation. They had a, a kitchen and a restroom, and uh, the people who live there seemed to really love it. And I was just driving uh, on the highway and looked down one day, and there were bulldozers and dump trucks just demolishing the whole camp early in the morning. And it was heartbreaking, and so uh, I love this camp. I love pulling into Berkeley and seeing these uh, tents here with people, you know, occupying this space to sort of protest, to raise awareness. And uh, I'd hate to see uh, these people displaced and this protest come to an end. So we, we sent emails to city council and to BART uh, to say that, you know, as residents of Berkeley, we don't want uh, this camp to be touched. And uh, sure enough, they got an eviction notice that was supposed to take effect today at 6 p.m. Um, but Robin and others uh, filed a lawsuit to um, slow that process down and get a temporary uh, halt on that order. And I think that on Halloween they're going to have another uh, court date to talk about it further. But I did hear that the, the camp just on the other side um, might be getting evicted. So, um, so we're here to show support, you know, basically. Well, thank you very much. This encampment is called First They Came for the Homeless. What makes it different is that unlike many of the spontaneous uh, encampments that have sprung up, this encampment is political. These guys are political. And what do I mean by that? If they have constantly, this is the fourth place they've been, they've been run out of all the others, they have said, look, we're homeless. But we're homeless because we don't have any place to live. We would like to have a place to live. We need help. That's the first thing. I think that's important. They're political. And for that reason, the administration is not crazy about them. Example. One of the things they did that I thought was really sickening is, uh, is sad, a uh, uh, spontaneous um, camp encampment was set up across the tracks on the other side. And there, unfortunately, a woman died from an overdose. But when they reported it, they tried to say that these people, that, she, that these people were used. The fact of the matter is this encampment made a, a political decision that they would only associate with non-drug situation, no drugs on this encampment, no alcohol on this encampment, and they stuck to it. And for them to be smeared with the unfortunate overdose death is really grossly dishonest. The police know better, the city administration knows better, but they seek to deceive 
the people, and that's sad. That's so sad because these are honorable human beings, and I, I, I wish I could help. I, I mean, I want to help them, but we can. All we can do is what you're doing, and that is record the truth, talk to the people, tell the truth, and what are we going to be able to do about about this? I don't think we're going to solve. I don't know if it's possible to solve the problem of homelessness this side of capitalism. Mm. We may have to consider a system change. Absolutely. I'm done. This is my neighborhood. I've been in this neighborhood since 49. I'm a tour here. And what is happening now as far as this camp, this is the cleanest camp in Alameda County. And it's supported by the community, Friends of Adeline. We come and, and visit. There's rules and regulations here. And some of these people are veterans. And people have jobs and they work. But they need a settled place to live, to reside, and feel safe. And this place is safe. And it's been here since January. All right, hey, so I'm Chase, and I'm here with a bunch of great activists standing up for the houseless people. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the Venus Project. You can check out this cool four minute video on YouTube. So the Venus Project abolishes not only capitalism, but the monetary system in general. So it abolishes money. So the idea is that we have the ability to create a world where we use resources instead of money made by the Federal Reserve, which you know is just a piece of paper. It means nothing. It's all a scam to so keep the rich rich and the poor poor and keep the middle class kind of just working on behalf of the rich and blaming the poor. Anyways, so what we're talking about with the Venus Project is creating a world where everything is free for everyone. The basic necessities of life such as food, health care, education, um, housing, all these things are provided free of charge to all the world's inhabitants. And the way that we pay for this, well, we have renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, tidal, geothermal sources of energy that we could be powering the whole world with for free forever if we would just use it the right way, right? Rather than using um, fossil fuels and whatnot and feeding oil companies. So, uh, so everything can be free. We have the means, if only the will, to make everything free for everyone. And what we see is that when the basic necessities of life are taken care of, provided for people by their community, they feel empowered to help the community in whatever ways are needed and that they because they feel such dedication and compassion from their community and uh, so check out the Venus Project it's a four minute video on YouTube and then there's a longer documentary about it called Zeitgeist Moving Forward and that's available on YouTube as well Zeitgeist that's Z-E-I-T-G-E-I-S-T -E -E Zeitgeist Moving Forward on YouTube. All right, cheers. Thank you, Chase. You're very welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm Phil. Uh, nice to meet you, Phil. And is this where you live? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you look around, like, we have community here. I feel like the people over here at this eviction party are the wealthy ones and not the people driving around on the street, uh, honestly. Absolutely. Real wealth is like nature and community and, community and collecting yeah. memories instead of collecting possessions. Yeah, and what was it like to live here? It's it's interesting. Like it's difficult in some ways, like having to walk a block away to get water and not having a shower and things like that. Um, but it's great to have community here, um, and you know, living without contributing to the housing crisis by taking an apartment for somebody who needs it, um, and just being able to help the community. Um, there's a number of uh, like a fifth of the people in the camp help out at Food Not Bombs. Yeah. Uh, which is like a local free food sharing program. Wonderful. Um, and a lot of people are involved in different activist stuff here. Yeah. So it feels like kind of a, a community of activists that are fighting for a better world. Absolutely. See, some people, they say, oh, we need money as a motivator. You know, humans are inherently lazy, and, and if they don't, you don't have money as a motivator, they're just going to sit around and do nothing. But, you know, you, you people living here are, are a great example that, you know, you get pleasure from helping make the world a better place. Yeah, I mean, uh, in my opinion, a lot of the most important work that the world needs is not going to pay very well. That's uh, right. You don't get paid a lot to help other people directly. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Or like me, I, I'm an animal rights activist. And yeah, yeah. The, the, the animals, they don't have any money to pay anyone, but exactly. they still need help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like money comes usually from taking nature and, and turning it into goods and services. You know, like instead of having community feeding each other, let's have everybody buy their food. That's sort of... So like, honestly, we don't need money for a lot of things. Absolutely. I think money's holding us back. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Phil. Yeah, thank you. Hi, hi, Robin. Hi, how's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. Um, so what's going on here today is uh, this is a homeless encampment and we're basically, it's a protest and we're saying that houseless people deserve the right to exist. You know, all across the country, all across the world, houseless people are being pushed. Uh, they're being kicked out of cities. They're being beaten by police. They are being... Uh, you know, just being treated like a joke, like their lives don't matter, you know, and their lives do matter and they deserve to be spoken up for. And that's why I've taken a lot of the action that I've taken. That's why I've gotten people together to come out here to help support them. And that's why I help support them on a daily basis. Um, I'm so glad to be a part of this encampment. It's... Oh, what's that? This racket on a consistent basis. Though. Yeah, about every 15 minutes a bar train goes by. Uh, it stops from 2 to 4 a.m., but uh, other than that, it's every 15 minutes. Oh, uh, wow. So, we're just, as also as a statement, as a protest, we need to end our codependent codependency with corporations you know uh, our society has a large uh, codependency with them and th these are the people that are trying to evict us right now BART is a federal corporation that makes billions of dollars uh, every single day and they think you know they say that this is private property and we believe that this land is not being used for anything else and whenever there's disabled people that uh, can barely make it to the bathroom uh, people that have Parkinson's that uh, you know need a safe place to live. They can't work. They can't get a job because you know they can barely they can barely do the things that people in regular society can do. And you know these are some of the weakest humans in our society. We need to stand up for them. Hopefully the police show up. Hopefully they don't. Uh, it could go good or bad either way. Um, I don't think they will show up now that we got this much community support and I'm just so glad that everybody's out here. Yeah, thank you for being here too. Thank you, Robin. Uh, yeah, no problem, John. Okay.